guys, welcome back to the workshop and welcome back to our introduction to woodworking series. So in this part, part two, we're going to be mainly focusing on like power tools and the kind of bench tools that uh, woodworkers use and are uh, obviously a great advantage to doing woodworking, mainly because power tools in their essence speed things up and they make things more efficient. And Obviously, when it comes to woodworking, you can do everything, you know, with hand tools. You can. Power tools will just speed things up and make you more efficient in your work. That is all they do. But they're great fun to use, no doubt. So let's get into them and start bringing them out. So the first ones, I'll not spend too much time in these because I covered these in the last ones in the hand tool part. Um, but still, they're, they're still sort of a hand tool in that way. You've got your drill here, which obviously drill pieces. You've got your drill for the drill pieces. And then you've got your your impact driver, which that is for drilling screws in. So obviously you could have the drill and you could attach, you know, you could attach that to it. That's what I've done for three years and it works. It, it works just fine. The only difference is, is this has got a lot more torque. So whereas with a drill like this, uh, you could not screw in a big screw that's like three, four inches long. It, it would just, it would probably fail. Whereas this thing here, you could drill, uh, you could screw in a screw that's, you know, 10 inches long, no problem. So that's the difference with them. Uh, and they're very handy tools. But again, it's just depending what work you're doing. Are you outdoors, you know, putting up sheds, houses, frames, whatever it may be. Uh, that is a, an essential item for when you're doing stuff like that. Um, aye, so they are very useful tools. And then a wee set like this, and you've just got all your screwdriver bits and uh, all your kind of torques. This is handy, this wee set, because you've got this long extension bar here. If you want to, you know, screw into something that's deep then it's definitely handy a wee set like this which there, there, there's loads of sets like that and um, so i let's move on to the next thing so here we've got two types of sanders we've got a belt sander um, and then we've got a orbital sander which is a random one it just sort of vibrates both of them have got their own use and um, and these are just cheaper ones uh but if I and if I'm being honest, you know these day just a good a job as your kind of you know top of the top of the line ones, cordless ones. Um, in my experience, they do the same thing. Uh, the more dearer ones, they just they they might have a higher wattage, higher power. They go faster. They might not have the you know the variable speed in that. Like, but these are good. Um, really useful tools and majority of them like that you, you know you can sort of act them uh, they can act as like a bench sander because you can simply clamp them up that way you can use it there and then they've got a wee thin bit here as well that you can use to get in and sand fine wee profiles um, so I useful tool that and then this as well is a useful tool that is that's really aggressive um so when you're not wanting to take much away you see i'll i'll really use this when i'm sort of just like finishing you know going through the grits when i'm wanting a smooth finish then i'll go to this if i'm wanting to take a lot of material off um then i'll use this but again you know like the the hand plane sometimes you can you know you, you can take mere wood away um in a certain period of time is what this can so again it's just purely preference but they're both useful items and they've both you uh, and they've both got their uses so aye useful tools in woodworking and next we've got our jigsaw now a jigsaw is a very good tool it is um this is an invaluable tool again when it comes to woodworking because um, this will do what your kind of coping saw will do, but it will do it so fast. This will do what your the band saw will do or, or the scroll saw will do, which which I'll get to them um, after I show you all the kind of 
handheld power tools but aye, uh, this can cut really tight radiuses um, really useful tool to have which is the jigsaw which again is as I say you know some people go out and they buy all the tools that they need so that they're all there whereas you know you maybe no buy a tool until you need it so uh, it's always cool to have the tools that you need you know but when you're buying you know 50 60 different types of tools it, it, it can become expensive when you buy it on one go but when you're buying a tool each week it is less expensive or it's less noticeable on your wallet so <laughs> you get what i mean and <laughs> um, by jigsaw very very useful tool definitely something that's needed in a woodworking workshop and you've got this type of sander as well now it's got the body a uh, angle grinder because it's got that power and it's got this six inch disc here this pad and you would put a sticky uh, piece of sandpaper to it, a circle bit obviously um, this is a really really aggressive one when you want to take away a lot um, but this can be used as well for polishing um, you, do, you would just put the, the polishing sponge on that and you could use that no problem for that um, I've actually used it myself on my car uh, when I was uh, polishing it so I uh, definitely another useful tool but th this is a kind of older tool um, and it it doesn't just circle, it'll sort of oscillate uh, so a cool tool you see it there, it's got a kind of cam on it there um, so it'll kind of oscillate around really useful tool in woodworking as well and here we've got some angle grinders now an angle grinder majority of the time is going to be used for cutting metal but I have used this so many times when it comes to, you know, uh, shaping wood, taking a lot of wood off in a short uh, space of time, using these, you know, wee flap um, disc pads that are really, really useful. Really, really good tool to have, useful tool, and you get all sorts of different ones. Um, that, that's just a kind of cheaper one. And then that's a kind of better one, Makita one. So again, all down to preference, but nonetheless, a useful tool in the workshop. And what we've got here is a multi-tool. It's a kind of funny tool, I know. Um, it's not got much use, but it certainly has got a place. It's one of the tools that you maybe only use once in a blue moon, but when you need it and it's there, you're glad it's there. Um, so uh, you, you can put all sorts of different blades on it this comes up here and comes off and you can put it on all sorts of angles to get into all sorts of uh, you know kind of tight corners and that really useful tool and it'll oscillate like that so aye man I've used this loads of times really good for getting into tight corners as I say but it has got many uses and as I said, it's got odd, you can get all different types of blades for it. Blades for cutting uh, metal, blades for cutting stone. Aye, a useful tool which has got its place in the workshop, definitely. I must have, I'd say. <coughs> uh, and here we've got a wee Dremel tool. Now, I've used this tool so much that, you know, starting to wear it out. This is also an invaluable tool for loads and loads of different things. Uh, I use it on wood, I use it on metal. You can literally use this for anything and you get so many different uh, wee, like wee adapters. You can get wee sand pads, you can get wee cutting discs. And, so, and Dremel themselves, they've got loads and loads of different attachments that you can turn this into a router, a saw. This wee tool here is uh, an amazing wee piece of kit. And you can get loads and loads of different cheap ones. Say, ah, I, I had uh, two cheaper ones and they both broke on me. And I had just splashed it and I got this one. Um, and I've, I've used this for more than a year and a half now. And it's still solid. It's, it's, it's so smooth. Uh, whereas the last ones, are like kind of the cheaper ones, have a wee bit of vibration in that. And 
This one has a uh, I definitely worth every penny. And what we've got here is a router. No, I I only got this router like uh, last summer, so maybe six seven months ago maybe, and I've probably used them maybe five or six times. Again, it can be a very useful tool, just depending on what you're doing. Um, see, what the router does is it cuts profiles, it cuts certain shapes. Um, but see, what the router does is what certain planes can do, certain like like hand planes. It's like some of the, the hand planes that I showed you, the wooden hand planes, have got certain profiles. Um, the same kind of profiles that these cutters have got. So before that, you know, we had this stuff, we would use the hand planes, you know, to cut the profile in the skirting board and the doors or whatever it may be. But again, it's got its place in the workshop and it's, it's a good tool to have. But they, they ain't expensive. They're, they're, uh, sorry, they, they ain't cheap. <laughs> they're, they're a bit expensive. So I knew that it wasn't something that I was going to be using all the time so i had just bought myself a cheap one and i just that is the case when it comes to a lot of the things if you know that it's something you don't gotta use now and again there's no point in spending four or five hundred pound on it when you can just spend maybe 60 70 pound and you'll get yourself one that'll work all the same um it's like if you buy a cheap one but and uh, now this goes for autos if you buy something cheap and you use it every day it will wear out a lot quicker. Whereas if you buy something that's a uh, quality and, and you know a premium thing, use it every day and it'll last for 10, 20 years. Like so I again it's just your preference and what you're willing to spend. So I and a, another tool that's a uh, that's a uh, pretty valuable and again it just depends what you're doing is a circular saw. It's one of the ones that you'll not really use all the time, you know, um, and for me, I've got the table saw and the band saw, and the circular saw is essentially a, a, a portable table saw, but it's one of the ones, but the, um, it depends what you're doing as to whether you're going to use it all the time or no, but still, it's a, it's a useful and viable tool when it comes to woodworking. So, there is loads of kind of handheld power tools, uh, even more than what I've shown you the new. There is still a good few different specialised tools out there. Um, you, you know, nail guns and that, and you know, just uh, aye, there is certainly loads out there. Um, it's just uh, again, it's like I've said in my last, I've said it loads of times. I only buy a tool when I really see a use and a need for it like that. Um, say, I have been meaning to get a new circular saw, but I've never actually uh, needed it. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I've I haven't bought it. I'll use my bandsaw and my table saw. See, I'll usually use the bandsaw mare, even when it's, you know, and I, I probably, you know, should use the table saw, but I'll use the bandsaw and then I'll just simply clean it up with a hand plane like that, you know, and because the bandsaw is no very good at getting things perfectly straight, that's what the table saw is good for. And um, then it maybe leave lines, so I'll just weave it with a hand plane and Bob's young here are good. So, We'll go and I'll just show you a couple of the kind of machines, the machines that I've got anyway. Again, I ain't got them all, but I've got, you know, like 80% of the kind of machines that woodworkers use. And uh, again, they're, they're the kind of small hobbyist bench machines, but they do exactly what they're meant to do. So I'll show you these the now. See, what we've got here is a scroll saw. Um, another cutting tool. And what the scroll saw is good for is for cutting inside a circle. So if you want to create some sort of pattern on a piece of wood inside the circle without breaking that circle, then you would simply drill the hole in the wood. Then you can take this off, put your wood on, you know, put it through, and then you would be free to cut inside that wood without breaking the wood like that. So... Again, it just all depends on what kind of work you're doing. Um, I got this because it was cheap, no, because I needed it. I only, I only paid £20 for this. Um, and really, I've like, seen the motor and I was like, oh, I could use that motor for something. But I, I've just kept a hoard of it. Um, and I've, I've found that, you know, maybe people that will use 
the scroll saw, maybe no use the bandsaw as much, or people who use the bandsaw, maybe no use the scroll saw as much. So for me, but I always use my bandsaw, and there has been times where I have used this, um, but again, it's certainly got its place in the workshop like that. So it's a, it's a useful tool when it comes to woodworking, if you want to do detailed work, things like that, aye. And what we've got here is a miter saw. Now again, this is sort of a specialised uh, item, you know, with a specific use. Um, I bought this one because I knew it was something that I was not going to use all the time. Uh, and what this is good for is for cutting certain angles, certain degrees, and then having that repeatability, you know. Simply put it at your angle, lock it up. Um, and you can, usually what I've done, but is that I would put a bit of wood there and I would lock it down to the, you know, to the length that I needed. Good for when you're cutting picture frames or anything that you, you that you need to angle up with a miter joint. So I definitely, it's got its use. And I know, that I, you know, I know some people who'll use this, you know, more than the table saw or more than the band saw. So... Again, when it comes to all these kind of tools, it is simply about your preference. What you like using more, um, and what you just, uh, just I uh, just what, what suits you best, you know. Um, some people are in big, massive opened areas where, you know, they don't really need to worry about dust that much, whereas some people are in really enclosed spaces. Whereas some of these machines will create a lot more dust than others. And the miter saw, uh, to me, this is one of the, this creates more dust than any of them. Even the table saw, because it's, it's hard to enclose this in. Um, you know, it's right there, the cutting edge right there. You have got a wee vacuum bit there, but it's it's no very effective, you know. So, but again, it's, it's a tool that has got its place in the woodworking workshop. Right, what we've got here is a planer or a jointer. I've got in the habit of calling a jointer, but in this country, Britain, I think we call it a planer. The Americans call it a jointer. Um, and what this will do is you've got your cutting, you've got a cutting blade in here you turn it on obviously and you'd run crooked wood, whether it's cupped or warped, twisted. You run that air this bit, this table here can go up and down. And you, you run it air it to get it flat. Whether you're running, you know, a bit of wood here. Whether you're running this side air it or this side, you know, you've ever run that side first to get this completely flat. Then you'd run this side air it. Um, you'd run that side there uh, to get this flat and then you've got two flat surfaces um, Which I'll show you the next tool which is the thicknesser So you would use this first and then you would go to the thicknesser you, uh, Already having your flat reference side um, To run under your thicknesser to get perfectly uh, Even flat surfaces, you know prepared wood for whatever you're going to do um, personally, this was one of these tools again. Um, I seen it, it was cheap, I picked it up, but I don't use it that often. Um, I'll, I prefer to stick to my my, uh, my horn planes when it comes to preparing wood like that. But if I'm, you know, I think I used it once in one of my videos, like when I first started the channel, and it was when I was... Uh, I had about 20 bits of wood that I had to, you know, plane down and, and get uh, flat and straight. And that's when I used it. So if I had loads of bits of wood that I had today, then I'd probably come to this because it's, you know, just faster and more efficient at doing it. Then, you know, you could do that in half an hour. Whereas with the actual hand tool, you'd maybe be spending a full day doing that. So again, it's all down to preference. You know, some people love just to sit with the horn tools and just naming the wood, working the wood, building the wood into something, you know, whereas some people just prefer, you know, to use the machines and to stay away from horn tools. I'm somewhere in the middle, you know, I, I love using the horn tools, you know, 
There's great joy in using the horn tools, satisfaction in using the horn tools, but I also like using the machines as well. So I'm somewhere in the middle and I, I enjoy using both of them. So I, but again, but a very useful tool in the workshop, definitely. And um, this is just a wee bench top one. Um, and these ones are kind of hard to find. You will find ones that are both a uh, like a like a combination one of a, a planer and a thicknesser. So you have like the this bit and the the thicknesser in one unit. Um so that this is a kind of older one, you know. But again, it's still cool and it still has its uses. Um, but I'll the the next one that I'm going to show you, these sort of work in tandem, work together. So I good tool to have. <coughs> So I uh, this uh, is the thickness up. So as I said, you'd use these in, you know, combination. If you got crooked, twisted wood, you run it off uh, the planer joint or first to get that reference surface, and then you would uh, run it under there, and the blades in the tap. So you have the the bottom and the tap would be both perfectly straight and parallel with each other. So I uh, this here is a useful tool, and I do use this uh, quite a lot. Again, but it's one of the things, um, it's one of the things that what these two machines do, that does, you know, both of the machines will do what that plane does, but both of the machines will do what that plane does in a day in half an hour, <laughs> you know, so it's all down to preference but again it's a it's a useful useful tool so the next thing we'll move on to is the table saw now table saws are relatively cheap these days but they are they're not accurate they're not precise and this one is a really cheap one like that you know a lower budget one i'll try and make most of my cuts with this sled that i made because i know that this sled is straighter than the aluminium sheet under it um, but nonetheless it has been a very useful tool um, in my woodworking journey you know so even you know uh, I, I, I would still say it's better to have a table saw than the table saw because uh, even if it is not as accurate as one with a cast iron bed you know one that's solid super precise I only paid a hundred pound for this, whereas the top of the line uh, table saws you you pay two or three grand for it. So this will do you just starting it in woodworking, and and you can pick them up, you know, tons of places here in Britain. You know, you've got uh, Screw Fix and Tool Station, um, and that's where I got this one. And you get there was another. Another wee table here, wing that, that went on it, know what I mean? Look, but I just took that off because as I say, I, I used the sled. And the sled is a, a useful tool. Of course, when you're ripping down wood, when you're ripping wood, you, you know, I take it off. And I, I, I'd made, I've made i made mine wee fence, um, which again, is more accurate than the one you get. And when I'm, when I'm cross-cutting wood, that's when I'll put, that's when I'll put this on. And I'll use this, so uh, if you're going to buy one of these, then you're best to build a big sled like this. And again, also, it's no great for uh, dust collection. Even lay it plugged in uh, at the back, your room will be filled with dust. Like in here, it's just a small room. After cutting, you know, I, I mainly work with hardwoods. So when you cut hardwoods, you know, it's more dense, there's, there's more sawdust that gets put up and it's just, this room is just always caked in sawdust. So I wrap this uh, sheet around it, I call it a scrub, <laughs> and that that cuts down on 90% of the sawdust, like uh, the dust, all the dust will be trapped in there. Um, so if you're going to buy one of these cheaper ones, get some sort of material down there covering the legs and you will see a, a, a major improvement uh, in that but the next thing we're going to is the bandsaw 
a, a bandsaw is an invaluable tool in the workshop. Um, I'll just quickly spin it and show you the new, but I've, I've turned it into a different machine. <laughs> that there is a smaller bandsaw, um, but I converted it into a sander. You can get one like that for a hundred pound, but I, a bandsaw is an invaluable machine. I use that every time that I'm making anything, any project, I'll always use that. As I said, sometimes when I really should use the table saw, I'll use this because this creates far less dust than that. And that's always my concern, but is that the, the amount of dust in the room. Um, so I'll just quickly use this and then I can simply just plane it straight. I'm good with a plane, plane it straight and then we're cool. Um, but I definitely, that is, the, a bandsaw is a must in your workshop, in your shed, doing woodworking. It will greatly improve what you do. Um, and what the bandsaw is good at is cutting curves, tight corners. Um, and again, also depending what it is you're doing. This bandsaw here in particular, I, I can cut trees with this, you know, if I had a big log. As long as it can fit under this 12 inches here, I can cut, you know, uh, a big tree. And then as long as you've got the right size blade, um, aye, it's really good for that. But you only need a wee small bench top one and, and you know, you're, you're, you're good. I only invested in this one because I use the bandsaw every day in every project. So I just wanted a better one and that's why I invested. And again, it comes to preference, you know, as you progress in your woodworking journey, you might not use the bandsaw as much as you use the table saw. So you might want to invest money in the table saw, or you might not use the table saw or the bandsaw as much as you use the miter saw. So you might want to invest money into a miter saw, you know, a good, good miter saw like that. It's all just doing a personal preference and what it is you're actually well, the next one we'll talk about is obviously sandals. Now, sandals are, they're good for a lot, a lot of different things, you know. Um, this was uh, this was my original one. I've had this one for three years and I do need to replace it because it's like bone here a wee bit. Um, but it still works and it's still useful. Again, you know, it just, uh, you can shape things. Or, you can, you know, uh, smoothing things up. There's just, there's a lot, a lot of different things you can do on this big belt sander. And then obviously in combination with these, you know, I, I made this one, um, but you can actually buy ones like this with the, you know, it's just a wee strip sander. And these are really good for, for just, you know, making radiuses, uh, making, you know, kind of certain profiles and just smoothing things here yeah, like that. Like, I having sandals in your workshop is uh, really really useful. But again, it's one of these things, you know, it creates a lot a lot of dust like that. So you need to always take that into consideration when you're buying this stuff to make sure you've got adequate, you know, vacuuming. And you know, I use a, a Henry Hoover, and it's not that great. I'd, I'd say it maybe it maybe soaks up fifty percent, you you know, and the rest just goes everywhere. Like, um, so that's something that I'm really needing to upgrade in, you know, like, uh, but aye, so sandals are really cool to have. And then the next thing is a, a bench drill. You know, when you're actually making stuff, projects and stuff, you know, it's like, ah, you, you can get most things done with a drill, but for accurate 90 degree holes, you know, you need you do need a bench a drill like this. It is invaluable. You can't really get anything done. You really, I say that, but then I say obviously you can drill holes away your hand drill like that. Aye, you'll get away with it, no bother. But if you're after precision, then you'll really need one of these. These are invaluable, and again, these are kind of multi-purpose machines. You know, I've I, I always put you know these uh, uh these wire brushes in it and that like. Uh, I've used it as a, a a polisher. You know, you get the 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 polishing wheel in there. Um, I've I've used it uh, before. I got this lathe. I used to make like wee honos for my boxes. So I just used to you know cut a wee block of wood out, 
and I would uh, nail a nail into it and I'd put it in the chop, turn it on and then I would use my wee Dremel to, you know, cut that profile, you know, to make a wee honnel for my lids, for my boxes, so I definitely, and again, this is just a cheap one, um, these aren't very expensive, you can pick one of these up for 30, 40 quid, um, I definitely, it's something that you really want to get in time, um, I. So I, another useful tool is a grinder like this. Now this is mainly a metal working tool, but what I've used this for, now I, I do use this for mainly metal stuff, but at the end of the day, if you're working with chisels, and that's what I'm talking about, you know, if you are working with chisels and you, you know, you nick it, you hit a nail or whatever, um, this will be good for reprofiling it. So, and, and these are pretty cheap, you can pick one of these up for pretty cheap, as I said in my last video, on eBay, you know, you, you, everything I've showed you here, you can get on eBay for pretty cheap, even one of these you'll be able to pick up for pretty cheap, and it speeds up the process when you're reprofiling your, your, your chisels, you know, like, uh, and again, once you've got these tools, you'll find uses, different uses for them, so the application can be endless really, it truly really can. Just your imagination is the limit, that's what I say, you know, so, I. So there we go guys, that is about most of the kind of power tools, machine tools that you'll see in a woodworking workshop. Now, of course, there are many more, that's not them all, there's variations, you know, uh, the, the, the power tools, there's, uh, there's different versions, uh, certain hand tools that have been made into power tools like the you know the the hand plane you can get the, an, an electric hand plane um obviously the circular saw i uh, there's a you know a machine that, that you know cuts mortise and tenons it's basically like a drill pillar but it's got a you know a separate column and it'll basically cut square holes out with the right drill piece but um, that's a, a specialised tool, as I said, and there, there, there's, there, there's quite a few different specialised tools like that, but they are advanced things that don't really need to be spoke or thought about the new. Um, so I, I hope that these tools have uh, maybe put some ideas in your mind as to where you want to go in your woodworking career. But at the end of the day, career, journey, <laughs> but at the end of the day, as I said, you know, you start with the, the hand tools uh, and then as you go, Having all the kind of uh, power tools, you know, mach machine bench top tools in your mind, you'll sort of know where to go for there. And, and and then also, but you know, YouTube is a valuable place when it comes to learning. You, you know, I've I've done a lot of learning myself off, off of YouTube, so it's definitely a good resource to be used as you're using the new. So I definitely, there's loads and loads of woodworkers out there who have got a, a, a wealth of knowledge and experience that you can take advantage of. So. Hi right, guys, in the next part, part three, I want to talk about joinery. Um, I'll walk you through all the joints that there are in the Western world anyway. Um, I I love Japanese joinery just because of the the intricacies. You know, it's a uh, it's definitely a, a, an art form. You know, and a just in a, a another level. Um, but but I'll, I'll walk you through all the joints that we've got in the Western world and their application and what they can be used for. Um, so I, I'll hopefully get that one out a lot quicker as I was a wee bit Noel there again and I had this one in the burner there, but um, I, so I'm going to start getting filmed that tomorrow and hopefully it'll be in the next few days after this one has been released. All right guys, so I hope that you've learned something and been inspired and you've enjoyed this series so far. Um, so I, I'm probably going to do more than what I thought because after the joint one I want to make a couple of projects, just a couple of easy things to get started. Um, so I, I think that's probably a good idea so we'll do that. So hi guys, I'll see you in the next video alright? Take it easy guys and God bless and build some guys. See you later.